This is a Nintendo Switch Lite, and this is a Steam Deck. But what if you could combine those two things into something even cooler? This is a Steam Deck Lite, or a Nintendo Switch Lite OLED Pro? Look, I don't know what you would call it, but it can play Elden Ring and it's tiny and it has an OLED screen and it can also play everything ever. It's called the A and Neo Air. Okay, it's finally time to open. That can wait. Snacks. <laughs> it's a horrible segue. Tokyo Treat and Sakurako or Sakurako or however I butcher pronouncing it every month. I'm so sorry to one of my favorite sponsors that I do here on YouTube. I love Japan. I love eating snacks. This is those two things combined in the most fun way. They are both monthly Japanese subscription boxes, but let's start with Tokyo Tree. Here, you'll get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. This month is special because both these boxes have the same theme, tsukimi, or moon viewing. It's a Japanese festival for the autumn moon in September, expressing gratitude for good harvest and hoping for another good year. So in Tokyo Treat, you'll get salt and lemon Kit Kats, mochi, and a full moon pond cracker. So I actually have already opened these and started eating them because I couldn't wait this month. And uh, these salt lemon Kit Kats, it is so citrusy and so good. But I also really love Sacrico. So in Sakurako, you'll get 20 traditional and authentic artisan Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas, and there's always one special Japanese tableware included in each box. And this month is a little moon festival dish. But this month, celebrating the Kyoto Moon Festival, all of the snacks pair excellently with a Jion Tsujuri Hochucha tea. God, I suck at this. <laughs> so as I said, I was eating these earlier and these little cookie bites with a like a candy icing coating on them are one of my favorite things they've ever sent. If you want to get either of these boxes and I highly recommend it, you can use my code BEATEMUPS on either one to get $5 off. Okay, now we'll we'll get on with the video. This is honestly just getting a little bit ridiculous now. I can't keep doing this. I feel like I'm making the same video over and over and over. That said, a &E don't stop sending me them. <laughs> I didn't expect it to come in a box this big. It's also very heavy. There's no way it's only just the console in here. Oh, what? I get a bunch of accessories this time. This actually is a pretty fire little case they've made for it. I always love the smell of a new case. Is that, is that weird? Is that just me? Okay, we have the charger, which came in a nice box this time. Whoa, this is a nice box too. This is very Apple-esque. Oh, whoa! King Kong 2 Pro Controller. It looks just like a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Oh my God. It's kind of very nice, actually. I really like the way this controller feels. Oh, I love a clicky button. All right, a keyboard. Oh, what? Hey, Neo, what are you guys doing over there? Yo, this is sick. Okay, all right. The Aya Neo Air. Real gamers, no gamers. Okay, a bunch of instructions, and then where's the console? There it is. Wow, it's so light. I have so many thoughts racing through my head right now. The first thing I notice is this like chrome buttons and triggers on top with like this fade from like this blue turquoise color. This feels really good. This feels quality. Oh, I love these lights here. As soon as this booted up and how bright and clear it is, it reminded me this is actually an OLED screen, which out of all the consoles that we've looked at other than the Switch OLED on the channel, none of them have had an OLED screen. So this is the first one that's done that. 
Oh, thank you. I, I don't I don't need that. I'm gonna connect to Wi-Fi real quick, and we're gonna find out how responsive these teeny tiny little keys are on this miniature keyboard. Is that why they? Does this come with it normally? Surely not. They sent this whole nice keyboard for me just so I can type on this thing if I'm having trouble because the screen is so small. Are they assuming I'm gonna play docked here? Cause I know a lot of their consoles have docks but they've never sent me one. At the top here, there's an Android, a Windows and a Nintendo Switch logo. I could start using this bad boy on my Switch apparently. Actually for fun, they're asking me to log in to my Microsoft account. So let's try this keyboard they sent over. Why? Ooh, oh, oh, it's RGB. Hello. And two little nice lights up here too. Whoa, this thing is like really well made. And boom. All right, let's go. This is way easier now. Want to use your fingerprint? Sure, let's try it. I don't really know what angle to swipe from, so I guess I'm gonna keep doing it just from here. Okay, we are in. It automatically loads into AS Space, which is its dedicated gaming home base, where once you have installed games on this thing, like you would a normal computer, they'll all pop up right here. You know, I love the Steam Deck, and this is essentially a Steam Deck Lite, but the Steam Deck only has Steam OS without some workarounds. But this, this is Windows. So I can start downloading Steam as well as everything else and uh, get playing all my games from everywhere. Well, from here, it's a lot of just fiddling around. So see you once I'm done fiddling with myself. Nope, nope, I take that back. It has been a wild ride with this little guy. I gotta say, I'm super impressed. Let's talk about everything I played and my experience and how it stacks up to everything else, which by the way, it's getting kind of ridiculous now with the amount of third-party handheld consoles I have. We started with the A and Neo, which they sent to us and I loved it. I could play Red Dead on the go. It was crazy. It was my first time having a portable PC in my hand. And it wasn't even six months later, they sent the A and Neo next, an improved version that was even better, buffer, more powerful. It could actually play games like Cyber Punk now, whereas this thing couldn't. Then the Steam Deck came out and made both of those irrelevant to me, because this is even better still, being able to pull off things I never thought possible in portable gaming. Then on this side of the smaller fence, you of course have the original Switch and the Switch Lite, which they both do the same thing, just different form factors. And then we even looked at the A and Odin. This is essentially a $300 mobile phone, but turned into a gaming console. It's great for emulation and for cloud streaming, but definitely cannot play anything really above like PlayStation 2, GameCube. We're not up in the Elden Rings, that's for sure. But that is where the A and Neo Air comes in because it's really a hybrid of this side of the table and this side of the table. It's actually smaller than this A and Odin by a little bit and essentially the exact same size as a Nintendo Switch Lite. It's like three times lighter than the Steam Deck. Ow. I'll start by saying I immediately downloaded Elden Ring and Doom, and I was very mediocrely upset, depressed, <laughs> bummed out because it couldn't do it. It couldn't do Elden Ring at all. And then I was like, okay, fine, I, I guess I'll do Doom instead. And then it couldn't do Doom. And then I was like, what is going on with this thing that it can't play Doom? Like Doom runs on the Switch. You telling me I can't lower the settings enough? Turns out there's a way to fix it. Because if you press the A and Neo button, it comes up with a few options here on the side. Pro mode, power saving, balance, and game. By default, it's on balance. I have never messed with this before, really on any of these consoles. I never thought about putting it up. And then as soon as I did, it fixed everything. It's actually shocking. So game is like the only way to go for any of these games to get decent frame rates and to make them playable. On this thing, admittedly, I had to dip everything way down to low and of course have that performance game mode on. But hey, it was extremely playable. Didn't look as pretty, but I'm still hitting 30 FPS. I even downloaded the brand new Spider-Man remaster that just came out. Now, this was the hardest game to get going on here. I mean, Spider-Man is gorgeous and it was just ported to PC. So there might be some optimization kinks to work out. But after lowering everything to low, 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 even turning resolution down to 720, it didn't look the best. It was playing though, 25 to 30 frames. I mean, some people would call that playable. I'm probably going to stick to playing it on my Steam Deck or my PC, but the fact that I can do it is insane. 
There's definitely sacrifices being made here with games like that. Having to make the sacrifice of turning off some settings and some shadows and some textures. But I gotta say, the OLED screen comes in clutch there. It's a weird trade-off here. You got the resolution here and you got the OLED here. But for a lot of games on this, you can do the resolution and the OLED as long as they're not, you know, the summer blockbusters. I was playing Cult of the Lamb in full 1920 by 1080p. So clean, so crisp, popping on the OLED looked gorgeous running at high frames. I wish the Steam Deck had an OLED, I really do. The OLED really helps this so much. This console is $650, which at first gulp is staggering. But then again, you look at the a &Eo and the a &Eo Next, two consoles that were up in the $1,000 range, and this company has already found a way to put it in a smaller form factor within months, put an OLED screen in the sucker, and make it half the price. Granted, it was already very expensive, but think about what this company might be able to do in six more months. The other games I tried, Witcher 3, immediately I didn't even have to tinker with that one at all. It just booted up and it was playing at about 40 FPS. It looked fantastic. It ran pretty much the same that it runs on any of these consoles, maybe not 60 FPS, but you know, around 40 FPS. But again, that OLED screen just absolutely popping. Once I got Doom running, holy crap, Doom looked and played perfect. It was so much fun. Something that's really cool about this console are these sticks. So I actually learned this, but the reason why they sent this controller isn't just because it's super freaking cool. And I'll explain why in a second. But the main reason is the sticks that it uses is based on this new magnet technology. Essentially, long story short, no stick drift. There is literally no way for these to get stick drift because of the magnetized technology inside. You don't want the whole mumbo jumbo. All you care about is that there won't be stick drift. They used the same technology here. They actually got the company that made this controller to make their sticks and they feel pretty great. It's $75. I took a look at it online. So it's called the Gully Kit King Kong 2 Pro Wireless Controller. This controller might be my new favorite controller. As soon as I turned it on and put it to switch and then went to sync controllers on the switch, it connected instantly quicker than my Joy-Cons connect. It also has an NFC reader. If I press the home button right now, it should even wake up the console. It has six access gyroscope. So the fact that this thing was made with the same level of quality and technology says what it needs to about this little unit. It's fantastic. I really can't get over how nice it looks and feels. The fan, whisper quiet. This fan at the top does blow out quite a bit of hot air but it's not loud and it doesn't seem like this thing is overheating too much while I'm playing games. I also downloaded Halo Infinite. Obviously I can't get it on Steam Deck, which again is another huge bonus of this thing. I have Game Pass installed on here and I could literally download any Game Pass games I wanted. But Halo Infinite on these a and -Eos, I always had a hard time with it. It was stuttery, it wasn't the best, but this was great. 1080p looked great and was playing fine, but dipping it down to 720p still looked amazing. There is a visual difference you can see between 1080 and 720 because this is a 1080 screen. But again, just because of the size of the screen is so small, it's not that bad. Uh, and I don't mind taking that hit to smooth out the frames. And once I did, yeah, I, I could play Halo like that. This keyboard, I still love so much. Much. The keyboard is made by a and Neo, and it definitely did come in clutch while setting up the console, but I use my phone constantly all day every day, so I'm used to having to tap on little buttons and stuff, and I'm kind of fine with it, but it has nothing to do with the console. I took a look online, and when you buy this, you just get the console. I think I just got the royalty treatment as a YouTuber that I was sent all this stuff to make my experience as nice as possible, which I do really appreciate, but I'm definitely not putting any of this into my equation when I talk about this thing. The internal storage is like half a terabyte. So every game I talked about so far is downloaded just directly onto the console. There is an SD card slot that I haven't used or put anything in yet because honestly, I'm sick of having to put SD cards in everything. So I'm just using the hard drive and that's fine. My friend Bob has one and he did say prevent some trouble when you're like installing things. He was like, have fun. And I kind of did have fun. I don't know. I know he was trying to put on a lot of wacky games. He tried to do Fortnite and it broke it for him. But for me, I really just downloaded Steam and Game Pass and all of that was fine. I haven't tried doing any emulation. I didn't want to bother with all of that this time. I really just wanted to see what this thing could do. If it could play Elden Ring, it can play Smash Bros. Melee. It really is a Switch Lite and a Steam Deck came together and had a baby. 
it's pretty fantastic. It has everything that a Switch Lite has as well as an OLED screen. And it can do anything a Steam Deck can do just a little worse for the higher end stuff. But when you start getting into indies and uh, a lot of those games that aren't as taxing, you can still run them at high frame rates, 1920 OLED. So I'm having a hard time finding something bad to say. Hello, hi. Uh, there's actually a couple of things I forgot to mention negatively about this thing. One is the sound quality, the speakers. There are two little slits down here and it, it, they're just not doing it for me. It sounds really tinny. It sounds cheap. Uh, hello? Parker, where are you? We must run through the demonstration at least once before the grant committee arrives. It's actually the only thing about this whole system that feels cheap. Everything else is so high quality. It's a real shame. Uh, it's serviceable, but it's not great. The other thing is uh, battery life sucks. Uh, having it on this high performance game mode while playing games, uh, playing something like Elden Ring, I was lucky to get 45 minutes to an hour out of it. Something like Call of the Lamb, you can push it for a few hours, maybe. Uh, but most of the time I've been playing this thing, it's been on charge. One cool thing is when you put it on charge, the lights go red to tell you it's charging. That's it. Okay, thanks. But obviously this does have a lot of other benefits for people that might just have the money to spend. It's smaller, it's more compact, it's pretty, it's comfortable, no stick drift. Like there's definitely advantages here. I'm actually super impressed with the design considering the kind of monsters they were previously making. The final thing that would give me any kind of hesitation to recommend it is just that they keep putting things out. They keep making a new thing, which isn't great from a consumer standpoint. Am I gonna say go out and buy this and you drop 650 bucks and then six months from now, they bring out the A&Neo Air 2 or something even better than the Steam Deck? It seems like this company is doing a great job at finding ways to one-up themselves every couple of weeks. So I really don't know. But from the standpoint of what this thing is, there's nothing else like this. These are Steam Deck clones. This is a underpowered Switch Lite. Very cool though, I love it. This is its own thing. It's literally like the world's first of what it is. A very powerful portable PC, the size of a Switch Lite that can play any game with some sacrifices on the higher end stuff, but it can still do it. For me, I love it. But because the Steam Deck is so comfortable, because it plays the games better, I can't stop using this for my powerful PC handheld gaming. I'm gonna keep playing this and it's gorgeous OLED screen for the exclusives. This kind of falls in the middle for me where I love it and I can see how it's the best of both worlds, but I already have both worlds and they're both so great at what they do. I'm starting to have too many options, which definitely isn't a bad thing at all. Ironically, the thing I'm probably gonna use the most after this video is this controller because it's so nice, but I'm definitely keeping this thing on charge for a while and I'm gonna see if it ends up worming its way into my rotation of playing games. I love making videos on these handhelds when they come out. Handheld gaming is definitely my main way of gaming these days. So if you like watching them, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If this video helped you out, yeah, do those things. All right, guys. Bye. Oh, God. Bye. <laughs>